here we are with the very first farmers. These are 50 million year old farmers before anybody else invented it. Sunshine, tell me what, what it makes these particular farmers very tiny, so special. Uh, well, these are leaf cutting ants and um, they harvest leaves from the forest um, and also sometimes from agricultural fields, from crops. And they bring that leaf material back to their fungal garden. And the fungal garden is underground and basically they are feeding those leaves. They cut them up into tiny pieces and they mix them with their saliva. And then they feed those leaves to their fungal garden. So this is a symbiosis. A symbiosis is a close partnership between two different kinds of living things. And the ants have um, developed this symbiosis with a fungus. And the fungus produces food for the ants, for the larvae, and for is the workers. Is that the fungus that we can see? That, that's yes, just the white. Okay. Um, the white stuff growing there is the fungus. And those little dark um, points that you see in there is the leaf material that the ants brought back. And now the fungus is consuming that leaf material and producing um, little um, food bodies, which are called gondolidia. So it's full of the kind of the perfect amount of sugars and nutrients that the ants need. So in there, there's a particularly large one. Can we get that one out? Sure, I'm gonna pull her out. This is the queen. She's directing all of this activity. Once every year in May, um, there's a needle flight. She comes out and uh, mates with the, the males, which also are flying at the same time. And then she digs a hole under the ground. And when she came from her natal nest, she had a small piece of fungus from her garden where she was born. And she begins tending that in the underground chamber that she's dug. And then she begins to lay eggs that were fertilized during the natal flight. Like if a queen managed to, manages to live 10 or 12 years, um, the colony can get huge. It can be, you know, the size of a big truck in wow. fungal biomass. And but underground. All underground. So it begs the question: Which came first, the fungus mm -hmm. or the ants? Well, they probably both. Um, uh, they probably both evolved um, separately for a while, um, and then. Uh, we, so, for example, we do ha we do know about free living forms of the fungi and, and fungi that can reproduce on their own of the same species, but here this fungi here is not reproductive. The answer. So, where do you get a hold of these queens? Uh, well, each year um, after the rainy season begins, usually in about May, April, um, I'm sorry, May, June, and July. Um, the ants begin to fly, so there's lots of ant researchers come to Gamboa specifically for these flights of Atta and Acromyrmix, so leaf-cutting ants. Um, and it's really funny when all the researchers are here because there's a little bit of a competition to get out there when the flight is happening to collect as many queens as you, as you can. And in some cases, um, some researchers will need a specific species and others will need another species, but they'll be finding all of them, so then we begin to barter and trade. Um, ant queens, and it, it's as if for about a month there, the new currency in Gamboa is uh, leaf cutting ant queens. <laughs> the ants have a fungus which they're nurturing in their nest, but they also have to deal with a fungus that they find in the leaves, and that's where your research is really. Absolutely, at. I'm really interested in, in fungi that are growing inside of leaves. They're called endophytes, and um, and they're in every single leaf, more or less. More or less, except for the young newborn leaves that are flushed without them. And then the leaves through time, within a couple of weeks, attain almost full density of endophytic fungi. And so endophyte means inside the plant. And they're living inside of the, the aerial tissues of the plants. And uh, we're interested in finding out what these endophyte, what role these endophytes play in the symbiosis between leaf cutting ants and their fungal garden. So we know that much of the leaf tissue that they're bringing back in their beautiful little ant trails um, is full of these different fungi and there is a huge diversity of these fungi. And so we suspect and, and, and we know from other studies that these fungi can produce um, toxic chemicals or secondary chemistry. So they don't actually want to keep them in the in the fungal garden, it would contaminate it. It appears that some of these could be contaminants to the fungal garden. So the ants have an interest in choosing leaf material that has lower densities and diversities of these endophytic fungi. And that's what our research is trying to tease out 
um, what the potential costs for the symbiosis are of these endophytes. Huh. And this has some, some um, potential basic applications because leaf cutting ants cause up to an estimated $1 billion per year, US dollars, to agriculture and forestry projects. So there's a potential that we could find some of these endophytes that um, are really um, not necessarily toxic, but that the ants don't like. And we could uh, brew up large vats of these good fungi, or at least good for humans and apply them and that would be um, organic and sustainable practice because we're just augmenting something that's already there.